Hello and welcome back to NAS Compares and today I want to talk about QNAP NAS and Google's Home Assistant. So without further ado, let's get started. The Google Assistant, um, I'll be honest with you, I've been playing with it for a little while now and I'm not going to say I'm unimpressed, but when it comes to pairing this bad boy with your QNAP NAS, I've been met with nothing but disappointment. I'm a guy that uses a lot of different NAS brands out there, not just the big guys, Synology QNAP, but we've got Acer Store and TerraMaster and all kinds of stuff back there. And right now I'm trying to find out a way in which I can access the contents of my NAS with the Google Assistant because it's a little disappointing at this stage just how much these devices, and I don't just mean this, of course I do mean Amazon Alexa as I talked about in the other video, how much they rely on cloud-based services. And so many of us out there are using our own network attached storage NAS and we want to access the content or control the NAS with our um, Amazon or Google device and just getting nowhere. So today I want to talk about what you can and you can't do. Let's talk about what you can do really more than anything else. Of course, you can control certain applications uh, on the NAS with the Google Home device. A classic example, Plex, of course. If you've got a Plex media server set up with the media living on your NAS, you are able to control Plex on another device that is accessing the contents of that NAS. Case in point, if you're using an Nvidia Shield or um, a Fire Stick or something like that that's got the Plex application where the NAS is a Plex media server somewhere else in the other part of the house, what you can do is use the Google Assistant to play the latest TV that you want to watch, a particular movie or play a piece of music or anything like that by giving it a command and it will play the Plex media server uh, application media on the output that you've decided once again, the TV, the Nvidia Shield, whatever going into it, and it will access the content of that media there. However, th of course there are goods and bads there. One, you have to rely on a third party application such as Plex in the middle, something you're gonna hear a lot in this video. And also, you are utilizing that output device, not this wonderful speaker. Because what is the point of this round-the-clock speaker, which again is audio in and audio out, I know. But it's really annoying that you can't just play the music. Because um, Google's own Google Music application, much like Amazon Music and Amazon Alexa, will let you access an entire online catalog of media and play it out of that speaker, but not your own local music. So another way in which you can work around this with certain applications with your NAS is with IFTTT. If this, then that. The way IFTTT works with your Synology NAS and Google Assistant is it gives you the ability to give certain customized commands, and not many, I'll be honest, we are talking four or five max, that for you to communicate with your NAS to do certain tasks. But once again, those tasks are very similar this time, and we are hoping to see more from IFTTT with regards to your NAS, because they have loads of applications just on the device itself, but not that many once you're trying to pair it with a NAS. Now, another way to work around to get your media out of this device is to upload the music or some of the media that lives on your NAS to a Google Cloud. And when that's there, you can then ask the Amazon, oh, sorry, I, I asked, uh, ask the Google Assistant to access the music on the Google Cloud account, the music um, cloud, and then it will play that. But once again, third party, you're using now a, a third party platform to play that music. Another way is to access the contents of your NAS with a smartphone such as this, use a smartphone, access the content of the NAS, and then cast it to the Google Home. Once again, yes, that works, but yes, you're using a third party device in the middle of it with your phone. That is not voice activation, that is just connecting things as you would with the likes of Bluetooth. So what is the answer? Well, there is one answer, but once again, it is not appealing in the grand scheme of things. The answer is quite simply that you need to set up a virtual machine on your NAS and you will need at least a dual core Intel CPU NAS with two gig of DDR3 memory at least. Set up a virtual machine. From there, you can install any one of a number. I'm not gonna mention them just because I can't personally endorse any of them because I've never, I've never really had a chance to get my hands on them. Um, the application that you can install on a virtual machine, such as you would a Linux, uh, a Windows, or a Google machine, get those installed and then get that virtual machine to access the content of your NAS via the likes of iSCSI or generally within the virtual machine software access those media files, the folders. From there, you can set it up that the Google Assistant can access that media via the app. Now, for those that caught my Amazon Alexa video, with that one, the skill was called 
uh, my media so do rec uh, recommend that there is one very much like it once again i'm not going to say what it is although i'll make anyone go for something i haven't tried myself very similar name indeed um, that you can install on your localized pc or a virtual machine so if you want to keep it on your NAS, you're going to have to go virtual machine but that is about it really i mean the software itself is very prosaic at this stage now one of the things that's really annoying and i mentioned this in the synology uh, video a little while ago is quite simply the fact that both Google um, Home and Amazon's Alexa system, neither one of them utilize localized media or DLNA, which to me is an obvious choice. This is not something that they're having technical problems with, and this is not an, a technologically evolutionary uh, evolution step. It is not. It is not difficult to get these devices to see the contents of other libraries over DLNA. Your laptop can do it, your smart TV can do it, your phone can do it, any of these devices can do it, your PlayStation 4 as well. They will just pop up, media server, da 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 da, -da there's the content. And the idea that you can ask this device or the Amazon one to play music on the NAS and it won't be able to do it, to me is laughable and a conscious choice by cloud, provided, um, to cloud providers to keep it in the cloud. Nevertheless, we hope to see things improve over the year with more people making their own little homebrew applications. So, if you are interested in learning more, do visit the NAS Compare article in the comments. Otherwise, don't forget, if you've enjoyed this or found it useful, to uh, click like and subscribe, because this channel needs to grow and I need your help to do it. So a simple click a like and a subscribe, it all helps. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.